back and forth threats leaving Americans on edge. For analysis, I'm joined now by Ryan Patel near Los Angeles. He's a global business executive who's worked for publicly traded companies and startups. So Ryan, uh, what do you make of all this? These latest threats that would likely include all Chinese imports to the United States. How do you see this playing out in the next few days and weeks? Well, we're here. <laughs> I mean, we, you know, this was the, the ultimate threat. And, you know, when you're talking about now cell phone companies and tech companies, this is why you've seen Apple and even Ford, even some of these companies haven't said anything a few months ago. So now they are in the middle of the news. Companies are now raising their hand. Like, I, I think it's something is now having to go either way. I don't see China or the U.S. I mean, they're buckled in. The pressure is going to have to come from consumers and companies to kind of help settle this because if you look at what China is doing with their economy and trying to be more inter interdependent with themselves and what the U.S. is doing, they're kind of still farther, farther away from each other. So how do you find a resolution in all this? I mean, midterm elections right around the corner here. I think the timing's not good, right? I mean, I think the administration, this is a win for them specifically because this is what they ran and campaigned on and being tough on foreign countries in general. And I think for China... But, I, but Ryan, uh, not if consumers have to pay the higher prices on things like Apple products. And I, and I don't disagree with you. I believe the consumers are going to pay at the end of this. But how the rhetoric is, the midterm elections are right around the corner. They may not feel it right now they're definitely going to feel it later and so i think this is for for the administration themselves they can they're in the short term short term way of looking at this i think i'm with you the longevity of this this is a bigger play that this will cause a trickle effect to all the suppliers you see australia for example being hit specifically because of china's buying its raw materials from australia as well so i i think this is a bigger logistical um problem. The administration would argue this is about ending unfra unfair trade practices. They say they want to bring products like Apple, you know, they should be made in the USA. Is, is, that, is that the right approach? Trump's hardline strategy here, is that really working? Well, I mean, I don't think it's working. I think they, they're creating conversations between both countries from the internal conversations. There's multiple issues. I just want to pick out on Apple. Apple is entrenched in China. They have manufacturing plants. They have a lot of operations there. That's one company that's really... I don't see them closing all their shop and moving to the U.S. because it's not economically feasible right now even just to do that. So Apple's in its own realm. But to your point... I don't really think that it's going to, at the end of the day, cause any issues between Apple and, you know, I think China specifically. And what, what do you think is behind the fact that he has not taken action on these tariffs yet? I mean, the public hearings are over. They're just talking about these latest tariffs. So what is he waiting for? I think he's looking for a deal. I mean, the, the fact that, you know, I think you look at a few months ago or a month, month and a half ago, there was no talks on either side. Last week, there's been constant, constant conversations. Um, I, I, I think he's waiting for something that he can bring back that to his to his Republican base. That is a deal that that he feels great at. Um, China hasn't budged uh, to my to my understanding of what they want. So you know, this is not a one. This was this all started with IP security rights, and now it's obviously gone into more than that. And there's obviously. A few more sectors that they're looking to uh, grow and manufacturing obviously is one of them. All right, we'll leave it there. Ryan Patel, thank you.